have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Hey, what's up, everybody? I realized that uh, I left you guys hanging with the uh, son of a nutcracker situation that you see on your screen right here. Uh, so briefly, I'll tell you what that's about. Uh, actually, if you have a problem with your hot end, it quits heating, it's too low of a temperature, which is I think what I had here, or some other malfunction, uh, you know, it still spits out the front. Alright, on to the testing. Sorry for the length of this video. If you just want to watch me smash stuff with a hammer and a big metal plate, jump where somewhere about halfway between now and the end of this video. Three, two, one. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I think this pretty much says it all. What's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. Today we're going to be talking about the TPU filament that I've been testing for myself. Um, this filament was bought and I've been using it. This isn't a product review from somebody that gave me something. This is just me telling you what I think about this TPU. So, if you guys have not seen this TPU, this stuff's pretty crazy. Um, it's actually really durable. Here you can see a little knot where, uh, where it would have gotten caught in the extruder. And it just bunched it up, tried to chew it away, but it didn't. It just bunched it up. Um, my hands hurt from working all weekend on projects, but I'm going to try to break it anyway. Oh. So, it does break but it is very stretchy. We'll do a little stretch test too. So the things on the table back here that you can see these are the items that I've printed and uh, that I'm going to kind of show you what I had success with and what I had failures with. So first things first let's get started on that. Okay so here we are these are all the pieces. Um, I first just took one of these these are upside down I guess now huh I guess they're not they're backwards they're supposed to be like that so these are D's literally just a D and uh, this gives me a little bit of overhang testing and a little bit of complete no um, support testing and it gives me a little edge testing here so you can see how it picked up the edge actually pretty nicely if I can make sure it's focused um, so these are just D's and I printed out a whole bunch of them testing each one with a different temperature. Um, so basically this was my primary temperature test. Um, everything else you see here was after I figured out what temperature I wanted then I tried printing different things to see what would work and what doesn't. Now what I found out is that things with a bunch of overhang uh, or angles you know similar to what this would be uh, and you got to remember that if it's very thin, so this is real thin, and it's got this funky curve, it just it hated that. Even uh, even on the bigger even on the bigger pieces, which you'd think would work a lot better, uh, it still had the same problem. It still wanted to it the the hot end wanted to push it against or lay the plastic down funny, and any little minor play in your printer uh, will cause this to happen. Um, now, if your printer was set up perfectly. Mine has a tiny bit of slop. Uh, I'm not for sure if you could print this or not. It, you may be able to, but the thing is is that it's actually the plastic stretching that's the problem. So the plastic actually starts warping and it gets off of where you'd normally be laying plastic and that's why I think this actually happens. So overhang um, or th really thin pieces or overhang doesn't really always work that great. Um, Here's another example. This is actually uh, ABS plastic and here's printing the exact same thing with TPU. You can see the dramatic difference. It started out fairly good and then it just got worse from there. Now I've actually never had to use a fan on my printer. However, I decided to test using a, pran, uh, a, a fan on my printer which allowed things like this and things like this to even get this far. So most of the time what would happen, here's an example. So here's a 215 and a 215. Okay, this one's with a fan, this one's without. 
Now, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the top here is actually a lot better on the fan one compared to this one. Now, interestingly, the over or the underhang really didn't help at all. It was just as bad on both sides, which is kind of weird to me. But the 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 top here actually does appear to be a little bit better. Is it dramatically better? Not really, but it's a little better. Now, I will say that 215 was probably too hot. I actually ended up using around 190. Uh, I'm sorry, 195. All right, so 195. And this is a bad color on this dicky, but 195C. That's the temperature that I ended up using uh, as my final temperature. Um, that seemed to work pretty good. That was able to give me some some really good results, such as this. Now, for bed surface preparation, I did just print on the glass. You can see how shiny this is, and it worked okay. However, uh, I ended up using blue painter's tape occasionally for uh, the PLA I was uh, messing with. And it ended up being that the blue painter's tape works pretty good too. But you do run into problems um, with it sticking. And I really don't know how to get out of that just yet. I don't know what other bed surfaces people are using. So I'll test those methods out later. Um, here, is, um, here is some vinyl tape. On This is actually a different plastic. This is... Uh, PLA and I did vinyl tape and you can see it got into it and I've had that similar problem with the TPU on painters tape or it wouldn't get into it um, but it did stick this whole thing stuck really good to the glass but after it started getting taller it started pulling the corners up which was the problem so surface right on the glass it does work but it's not the best helicopter So, um, let's zoom in on these guys right here. I'm going to be doing some destruction testing as well, so just hang in there. So let's zoom in on these guys here. Um, so this is 210, and these are the, but the, between 210 and 190 was really what I was liking. So this was my second test for temperature to find out what would really be the best. Um, so as you can see, the clarity and the sheen and the finish on here actually looks great and that is uh, 195 190 looks almost even better but the lower temperature means the more pressure that you have to put on your extruder hot end and uh, that leads to binding up so if we get up here to like 210 you can see what I mean look at the difference between these two on the surface finish. This is almost bubbled up and this is just really nice and shiny still. Now, um, and same thing with that's another 210. So the thing is, is uh, what I found out is if you get everything set up just right you can print stuff such as this with overhangs and underhangs and, and things that do okay but if it's really thin and it's got curvature or some other crazy stuff going on it doesn't seem to work very well if you've got a tube or something that's tall that seems to work fine it's just whenever you got something that's twisty or or different um, here I even tried it with with support to hold it in place and it still it still started acting up so that's just my experience if you were printing uh, cell phone cases and stuff maybe it would work a lot better here's a here's one of those little twisty cups I mean this worked fine this seemed to do pretty good. We're going to smash test this one against the ABS one. Here's a, uh, a golf ball. And it's actually like, I think, 25% infill. It's really crazy. It doesn't really bounce. You know, but that's pretty cool. Here's a, here's a dice, which I forgot to put top and bottom layers on, so ignore that. But here's a dice, and it's the same way. It's this... You know, you can see what the inside looks like. That's without a, a top at all. Infill, you know, it worked okay. But it's really squishy stuff. Um, it feels weird. So, there's that. Um, I actually did make some, some tires for some cars. And uh, these are actually hollow inside. They're actually just like two layers all the way around the outside. Which is pretty cool. You can actually see there's a little hole right there. That's because it's the top layer didn't get filled in that much. So those will actually be fit on 
rims that are made out of a different plastic and uh, for a little toy car or something. So um, let's get to the destruction. Let's find out what's going on here. Let's see how durable this stuff really is. Alright, so to start out with the uh, destruction test, this is like a paper thin piece of the TPU. Look how thin this stuff is. We're going to stretch it and see how it does. Now that was with the slices, there's against it. See it's liking, liking to delaminate a little bit there, but that's pretty good. Sorry if it's out of focus. That's pretty cool. So here's one that's that's like uh, it's just a little bit thicker. It's still one layer. Let's pull it this way first, because yeah, I can't even I can't even pull that apart. That's pretty tough stuff. So next we're going to do a stretch test. I want to actually see this stretch and go back. So let's take a measurement, stretch it, and see if it goes back to its normal shape. All right, it's hard to see those increments, but we'll go tip to tip. That's three to six and a half. So I'm just going to stretch it, and we'll see if it stretches back to that. Three to six and a half. All right, so before I actually stretch it too much, okay, there's three to nine just stretching so let's stay at three let's pull it all the way to like twelve if I can if I can get it to, oh broke it oh right at the seam weakest part well that's alright look at that though it's still the same size even with stretching it that much let's try pulling it long ways now it broke again that must be my problem because I've had other things that did not break that easy. So look, it appears to be breaking right there where all my little stop and start joints are. So when I printed this particular piece, it would start and stop in different places and uh, and come back and fill in one little spot. It looks like that's the weakest link. Um, all right, so let's try this. This is 195 with a much better adhesion. I mean, as far as just trying to rip this stuff, let's just try to rip it. It just ain't happening. I mean, that's good stuff. I've def definitely deformed it a little bit by trying to stretch it there. I can get my thumbs in there any better. Look at that stuff. Pretty cool. Let's do that for a while. See if we can break it. Negatory. I think that's pretty good. Let's try some hammer tests. All right, here we are. I'm only testing the materials of which I think is the proper temperature. I could test the higher one if you want me to, but I don't see the point. So here we are. Here's a D. This is temperature 200. And we're just going to nail it with the hammer. Safety first. I got my glasses on. Look at that. It did, it did actually split right there on the corner. But <laughs> it's good. Try it this way. Taking the paint off the uh, the stuff, and this still hasn't broken. I had to pull it apart. It's actually warm. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. All right, let's try this one's 190. Let's try it sideways. It really softens my hammer. Alright, 
about the same thing. It's splitting right there on the inside. Even where it's crappy, it still stayed together. Slight delamination right there, but that, who knows, it could be printer malfunction to have, have the issue. Let's try something else. All right, so here's what I've got, and here's what I'm gonna do. This is the flexible filament, and although it doesn't look that great, we're gonna see how it reacts. This is ABS. So we're gonna do a drop test. I'm gonna drop a steel plate on here and see which one of these survive. All right, here's my steel plate. This is about a, I don't know, half inch or so. About what, eight inches by two and a half, three, maybe three and a half inches or something like that. So I'm just gonna drop it from about knee height. Okay, three, two, one. Nothing. Let's try it one more time. Three, two, one. Yeah. It's still pretty happy stuff. Now, let's try that with ABS. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, well there you go. That uh, There's your comparison test between the TPU and the... Uh, oh my goodness, look at that. Alright, now let's try another. Alright, here we go. We're going to try these two little canisters. This is going to be great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave the lid on. All right, and I'm going to do it vertically. So, again, knee height. Here we go. Well, let me get the whole view, I guess. Yeah, I'll get it close up this time. One, two, three. Still perfectly fine. One, two, three. No problem. Let's try the ABS. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, I missed. It's still good. Ready? One, two, three. Wow. Look at that. It's splitting everywhere, but but it's still okay. I'm surprised. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three. Impressive. That's that's impressive. That's ABS, by the way. I'm quite, I'm pleasantly surprised actually at how well that did. So let's try it sideways. That's TPU right there. Perfectly fine. And the ABS. One. Two, three. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh yeah, it broke the rim off the top, and it even split the split the cap. So yes, indeed, that's a problem. This guy's still holding together just peachy, just peachy. All right, we got one more. This is a little battery holder that I designed. Um, this one's ABS, it's really solid. This one's that TPU and it's very flexible. So, we'll try them side by side. ABS, TPU. Three, two, one. Yeah, there's your comparison. I'd say the TPU wins. Still happy donkey dory. This one, not so much. Yeah, that's bad news. Bears right there, son. All right, this is the, the ring test. This is TPU, this is ABS. 
I'm only going to drop this from this high, which is about five inches. Yeah, imagine that. Pretty tough stuff. Oh my goodness. This is bad. Bad news bears. Okay, well there's your comparison. And uh, I will have to say, basically, TPU. I like this stuff. Um, it works pretty well. Um, I did have one other thing I would like to tell you. And it involves, yes, stuff still gets caught in the extruder occasionally. So, this whole entire piece was inside my extruder. So what happens is I, I started a print, I thought it'd be fine, it got like a couple hours in, and I left, and it failed. And this was bulged up so tight in there that I had to take the extruder motor apart, about halfway apart to get this back out. Look how long this piece actually is. This was completely all bunched up inside of there it was forcing everything and somehow it didn't break anything but that just proves to you this stuff this stuff is durable this just gr I mean it just grinded away for hours and hours and hours and it's still it like it didn't damage the filament you could still use this if it were somewhat straight <laughs> it's not straight well that's it I uh, hope you've enjoyed I will do a, a quick bounce test for you. This is TPU and ABS. All right, that's all I got for you. God bless you guys, have a good day. If you like this video, you can thumbs up this video. If you didn't, you can thumb down it. And uh, if you don't care, then uh, you can do either one, because I don't really care. Sometimes it's really hard to judge, thumbs up and thumbs down, because everybody's got their own viewpoint and everything. So that's good. Let me know what you guys think. Peace and love. See ya. Three, two, one. It's going to be loud. Three, two, one. Perfect. Now, the ABS. Three, two, one. What are you doing in here? One. Smashing stuff.
Well, that actually held up. Is it loud? Yeah.